So I have a question for you. Have you ever told a little white lie to get something that you really wanted? Something that you couldn't live without? Something that you were like, I have got to have that. I'll do whatever it takes to get it. Well, I think we all have. And this is a story about the time that I told a little white lie, maybe a big lie, maybe a little fib, to get my first paying gigs. Now, I wouldn't suggest lying on a resume or lying to potentially get a gig or lying in general, but there are times when a well-placed little fib can jumpstart something in you and light a fire underneath you to get something that you can't live without. And in this case, this is a story about how I lied to get a gig and how it jump-started me playing for a full-time living. So I was in a little practice room. I could still smell the mustiness in it. And it had a little piano to the side. And I was practicing classical and jazz guitar in school, wondering what is it that I'm going to even do once I'm done here, you know? What am I going to do with this music degree, you know? Like, am I just going to sit in a musty practice room the rest of my life? Because that's what it felt like up to that point. Um, what am I doing? And I thought, well, I have a buddy in Kansas City who's playing a lot of gigs right now. I'll ask him, you know, how do I get a gig? What do you do to get a gig? Um, am I even good enough to play a gig? I knew I was good at playing music, playing guitar, but could I do it in front of people for three to four hours at a time and keep up with all the rest of my peers that were a little bit older than me and definitely more experienced than me? So as I'm sitting in this practice room, I thought, I'm just going to have to reach out and call my buddy. And I called him a couple of times and no response. And I called him again and I said, hey, man, if you know of anybody looking for a guitar player in Kansas City, let me know because I want to get out there and start playing gigs. And he said, okay, well, I'll let you know. Some months go by, here I am, going to music theory practices or, or classes and just continuing to grind out playing classical and jazz guitar, which really wasn't my passion in the beginning, you know. I was just going to school because, hey, I needed to go to school for something. And I just went for guitar because that was the one thing I was passionate about, right? So some weeks go by, weeks go by, I'm playing like some little open mic night things, and all of a sudden my buddy calls me up and he was like, you play bass, right? In my head I thought, no, I don't play bass. And then without even thinking out of my mouth goes, yes, I play bass, of course. And he goes, you have a bass amp, right? And in my head I'm thinking, I don't have a bass amp. Out of my mouth before I could even really justify it, I said, yeah, of course I've got a bass amp. How do you have a bass without a bass amp? And he goes, okay, cool, so you know how to play bass. And I was like, yes, I know how to play bass, which really I thought, how much different could it be than guitar? It's the low four strings on a guitar. I could do that, right? So he says, perfect. I'm going to send you a list of 10 songs in the keys that I need you to learn them in. I'm really wanting to get rid of Fire, my current bass player, and I would hire you if you can show up and make it happen with my drummer and I. It was a little trio band in Kansas City, and they were playing like three, five nights a week. And he goes, if you can pull it off and it sounds good, I'll trust you to learn the rest of the songs and you'll have a gig with me playing three nights a week. This was a gig, mind you, four hours on a Sunday night, four hours on a Wednesday night, and four hours on a Thursday night every week at 150 bucks each night. And when you're 21, 22, you're like, that's all I need. I'm rich. I have no other bills, really. Um, and that's plenty of money for me, you know. So what happened was I lied. That was my lie. That was my big lie. So what did I do? I borrowed a bass. I borrowed a bass amp. Went to my buddy Matt's house. Played through maybe six, ten songs. And he goes, all right, you're in. So when he told me after that first little rehearsal, audition, jam session that I was in, I was now in the hot seat to learn like a hundred songs. I was learning songs day and night, day and night, and it didn't matter. After two weeks, I showed up, and guess what? I bombed. I pretty much bombed. Like, I was not good enough to be playing with these guys that were already seasoned musicians around town. What happened was I learned a lot from every single gig that I played, every wrong note that just pierced my soul, furthered my desire to become better. That one little fib led me, really, to where I am today. So, do I regret it? 
absolutely 100% no. I lied to get a gig. My buddy Matt let me in his band, kept me around long enough to get good at playing bass, which led me meeting so many other musicians. And it taught me the way of being a professional musician. Learning through the School of Hard Knocks is kind of what I did there. Just I'm thankful to him for not firing me and giving me the time to learn what I needed to learn and for showing me what it was like to get to a gig on time, set up, come prepared, know what's happening. Yeah, I lied to get a gig. I don't recommend it unless you can back it up. And if you can and you feel like you can do it, somebody's going to let you try, all right? So be motivated. Keep practicing. Don't lie. Don't fib to get into a band. Back it up with talent. Back it up with practice, okay? This is just one way that I kind of snuck into a band because I saw an opportunity. You really want to just be ready to seize the moment, and that's what I did in that moment. For you, I would suggest keep practicing, keep grinding, and if you want to meet musicians, go to jam sessions, uh, hang out at places where guys that play the kind of music that you like to listen to and that you want to be a part of, go to their gigs hang out, meet them, linger around, and maybe they'll let you up and jam. Maybe somebody else will be there that wants to start a band too. You'll meet, have a beer, and the next thing you know, you'll be in a band playing around town. But until then, I hope you like the story. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe. I would really appreciate it. But most importantly, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.